All right, let's get into the word of God. Uh, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. We're continuing our, our, our verse by verse look at 2 Corinthians. Again, this is the last book that we haven't finished uh, verse by verse of Paul's epistles. When we do finish this book, it's 13 chapters, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a series of topical messages. I normally don't do that, but this is from questions that I get. I get a lot of good questions, so I, I can devote an hour to each of them. And uh, we can get some, I got a bunch of them, so we'll, we'll, that's what we'll do after we finish this. Um, it's, hmm? It's on, it's on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's on, yeah. Um, we're, we're, so, so uh, once we finish 2 Corinthians, we'll, we'll get into some of those nice topical studies, be some fun time in, in the Word. Um, here, we, we're, we're going verse by verse through uh, Paul's epistle. 2 Corinthians, and we're in chapter 12. I'm going to read a few verses, and then we'll give thanks to the Lord through prayer. In chapter 12, verse 1, Paul writes, It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which, is, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do stop right now. We humbly bow our hearts and minds to say thank you. Thank you for your holy word, your word made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, your precious son, our glorious savior, who died on that cruel and criminal Roman cross for our sins. Father, may we never take for granted uh, that, that uh, wonderful sacrifice by his shed blood on Calvary's cross. So Father, we thank you for his, his sacrifice on our behalf. We thank you for uh, the apostle Paul, uh, he was a man like us with all the, the, the frailties and weaknesses and infirmities we have, but he was our ensample of how to build Christ in us. And Father, we thank you for his holy word, uh, his epistles that teach us how to do just that, to do what he did, which is Christ in him. So Father, we, we ask as we look into your holy word through the Apostle Paul, and as we compare and contrast uh, rightly divided to other scriptures, May you give us great insight, understanding, and wisdom, and most importantly, a greater appreciation of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here in chapter 12, notice how Paul starts it off. I, I, I wrote uh, Visions and Revelations because he, in this er, one of his early epistles, 2 Corinthians is one of his early epistles, he again has to commend himself to the Corinthians. They should have been out there exalting his apostleship to others yet he himself had to commend or vindicate his apostleship with them. I told you the last four chapters in particular, uh, 11, 12, uh, excuse me, uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13, Paul is giving his final uh, um, exhortation to these saints about his apostleship. Notice how he starts off this chapter. He says, it is not expedient. That word expedient means uh, necessary or, or, or beneficial. Uh, earlier, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, all things are, are, are lawful, but not all things are expedient. He says it's not expedient. expedient. It, it, it's not beneficial or profitable. It's, it shouldn't be necessary is what he's saying. Why does he have to do this? It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. He hated to glory and to boast about himself, but he has to do it with them. And, and he, he says this line, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And, and the reason Paul mentions that is because he's trying to show that he is God's sent apostle, his, his spokesman. He wants to show them that even in the future, the Lord has revealed to him that he will have appearances where he would see the Lord. I want you to see this. Um, go with me to Acts chapter 22. Uh, go back to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 22. Um, when Paul wants to explain his ministry to, to folks for the first time, he always goes back to the road to Damascus when he saw the Lord. Here in Acts chapter number 22, uh, notice in verse number one, Acts chapter 22, verse one. 
in this case, he's trying to explain his conversion to his uh, fellow Hebrew men. If you look at uh, chapter 22, verse 1, this is Acts chapter 22, verse 1. Paul says, men, brethren, and fathers, he's speaking to Jews here, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. Now, if you could see that parenthesis in, 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 in verse 2, and when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he said. So now Paul is speaking Hebrew to these Jews, these Hebrew men, and because he's speaking their, in their native tongue, they're paying even more attention to him. Look what he says in verse 3. I am verily or truly a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. That was one of the Jewish rabbis, a very, very uh, famous Jewish rabbi of that day, teacher, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God as ye all are this day. So then he goes into his persecuting of the, 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 the saints who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he, he says in verse number four, and I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. So he's doing all that. Now he's gonna show how he became who he is today. In, in, in verse number six, for time's sake, look at Acts 22 verse six. He's on his way to Jerusalem at the end of verse five to, to, to punish those people. It says, and it came to pass that as I made my journey, well, he's, he's going to bring them back. He's on his way to Damascus. He's going to bring them back to Jerusalem. Verse 6. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, it's important the time period, the time he gives, because this, this, the noonday sun is out in the Middle East there. Verse number 6. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Verse 8, and I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And what we now see is him recounting to these Jews that road to Damascus experience, his conversion and his calling, okay? Um, if, if you go down for time's sake, so he, he says in verse number um, Ananias came, verse 13, go, look at verse 12, uh, Acts 22, verse 12. And one Ananias, the Lord sent Ananias to Saul, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, now I want you guys to understand Ananias is going to explain to Paul what the Lord said to him. Verse 14. And he said, the God of our fathers have chosen thee. And that thee, that's first per person, Paul himself. That thou shouldest know his will. The first thing I get out of this is that God is going to give Paul his will. He's going to explain to him what God's will is. That means, huh? His vision. That means if he gives it to Paul, he's going to through Paul, give it to us. If we want to know the will of God, we got to go to the man who knows the will of God. Yeah. Notice it says, thou shouldest know his will. And what else? And see that just one. That just one is the way that they talk about the Messiah. And see that just one. Paul wasn't just going to hear from him. He's going to see him. Yeah. Just like Moses. Just like Moses. You'll see his glory. That's right. And should as what? Hear the voice of his mouth. Paul heard the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, for thou, that's Paul, Ananias continues, verse 15, for thou shalt be his witness unto what? All men. Who is the one who's going to take the will of God to all men? The apostle Paul. Thou shalt be his, verse 15, be his witness unto all men of what thou, now notice, what thou hast seen and heard. Verse number 16, and now why tarest thou arise and be baptized? and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's how a Jew recognized uh, his, uh, yes, that's how they, they, they're repenting and, and, and accepting of the Messiah. But here's the point. Paul is going to be, look at verse 15 again. 
for thou shalt be his witness unto all men. At the end, um, he says, of what thou hast seen and heard. So Paul is going to recount, re recount what he has seen and heard. Okay? Now, go over to Acts chapter 26. Again, Paul is going to give this account. And just like the Apostle Paul, when we want to explain what God is doing today, here, here's, here's a good point to remember. When you're trying to explain to someone about how to rightly divide the scriptures, how to explain the mystery of Christ, start with Paul's conversion. That's what he does. Go back to Acts 9, Acts 22, Acts 26. Paul did it. When he wants to explain what his ministry was, he went back to his seeing the Lord on the road to Damascus. Uh, go at chapter 26. Um, he's speaking to King Agrippa now. Look at chapter 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer. By the way, why is he speaking to King Agrippa? Because back in Acts 9, the Lord Jesus says, Thou shalt be my witness to, to the Gentiles and to kings and the children of Israel, right? Well, he's before a king giving the testimony of the Lord Jesus. Here we go. Uh, verse number two, Acts 26, two. I think he's fulfilling, he's fulfilling that prophecy. That's right, right? He's fulfilling that prophecy. I think myself happy. By the way, not just here. He, he, he finally gets to Rome as well and is able to speak right to the Romans authorities right there. He, he, that was the one who would have let him go, but he appealed. Exactly, exactly. He used the opportunity before these Roman authorities, especially, to get the word of Christ out. And it worked. It worked. Uh, over in, in, in Philippians, he talks about, he talks about those who were, who were saints even in the palace there. He got folks saved even in, 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 the, in the king's family. Uh, let's keep going right here. He says, verse number two, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be, be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, remember he was a student of Gamaliel, uh, that rabbi in Jerusalem, know all the Jews, the Jews know me. Verse 5, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most stra straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Paul was a separated of the separated people. His family were separated. Pharisee of a Pharisee. Pharisee, of a Pharisee. Son of a Pharisee. He said. Verse 6, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. God has been promising the Jewish fathers this Messiah and his kingdom. And Paul is going to be the one who explains who this Messiah is to them. Verse 7, unto which promise are 12 tribes instantly, right there at that moment when the temple's still up, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Now watch this. The key was Messiah, his death, and his resurrection. Watch what he says. Verse 8, why should it be thought a thing incredible with you, that God should raise the dead. I mean, come on. He, 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 he created man out, out, of, out of the dust of the ground and breathed into the breath of life. Man became a living soul. If God can do that, he could raise the It's nothing for him to raise the dead. Verse 9. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Everything with these Jews surrounds the, the person Jesus of Nazareth. Okay? Verse 10. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Verse 11, and I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. He went after them in his religious zeal. Verse 12, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the bright. Notice, it's above the brightness of the sun. You have the noonday sun, and there's a light brighter. 
let me, let me explain the difference between grace and, and, and prophecy or the kingdom program. When the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured on the, on the Mount of Transfiguration, it says that his, his raiment shone as the sun. But when Paul sees him from heaven's glory on the road to Damascus, he didn't just, that sun represents um, his glory in the, in the kingdom on this earth. But there's a greater glory. Even before God made the sun, light appeared. You, you go back to Genesis, God said, let there be light, and there was light. But he didn't create the sun until later, the fourth day or whatever. He said, there's a, a, a great light, the sun, but there's a light greater. I think God, even back there, was, if you can look back on it, was, 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 had, had in mind the body of Christ in the mystery. Just like with Adam and Eve, Paul said in Ephesians 5, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. When God made Adam and Eve, he was thinking of Christ in the church, Paul says. Well, I think that, that light, in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Remember, he had this in mind, the mystery of Christ, to glorify his son in the heavenly places through us, even before he had the prof prophetic program worked out. So here's what I want you to see. Notice in verse 13, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, and he makes it clear it's above the brightness of the sun. Imagine that. Shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Verse 14, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Remember, he was being convicted. And, and, and he was telling them, stop fighting the conviction. It's hard to kick against it. Verse 15, and I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Now we're going to learn even more of what, what happened to the Paul. And this, when he talks about his, these visions and revelations, notice what he says. Verse 16, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness. Both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will what? Appear unto thee. Love yes. The That's right. Paul says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Listen, in 2 Corinthians, Paul didn't have the complete mystery of Christ. Right. He hadn't gotten all the information. He hadn't written it down. It's complete now. But when he wrote 2 Corinthians, he's telling them, listen, there's still more for us to learn. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Verse number 17, delivering thee from the people, that's Israel, and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Now, what's Paul's ministry designed by God to do? Look at verse 18, to open their eyes. Now, he's not talking about their physical eyes, although Paul could heal. Yeah, he's talking about their spiritual, the, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened, Ephesians said. Look what it say, verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from what? Darkness to light. Who delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1, 13. We, when, you're, when you're a heathen, when you're lost, when you're unsaved, you're in, you're, you're in darkness, you're in the power of darkness. Well, when you trust Christ, God has now translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. Each and every one of us who are saved, we're going to go into his kingdom of light. Okay? It says darkness to light. But whose power are you when you're a heathen? And from the power of Satan unto God. Ryan and I were just talking just this morning how Satan wants to destroy families. And boy, he's doing a good job. It's, just, it's, 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 it's satanic. It's harmful. Because that's the power, power. Satan's power wants to destroy what God loves and what God, what God desires. And from the and, and what we, we said, the only answer is the Lord Jesus Christ and his power and his word. Notice here it says, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive, notice, forgiveness of sins, not just remission, but forgiveness of sins, and, everybody get this, the forgiveness of sins, that's what makes you an heir of God, okay? You're saved, your sins won't keep you out of heaven. But notice, and there's more, an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That has to do with being a joint heir with Christ. 
Christ's inheritance, he's willing to share that reign in the heavenly places with those who suffer with him. And what does Paul, how does Paul end this? Verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient until this, what type of vision? Heavenly vision. What did he do? But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, the southern region of Israel, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. All right. So what Paul is talking about, he will come to visions and revelations of the Lord and the Lord would appear to Paul. He would he would appear to the Apostle Paul multiple times. Um, I'm looking here in, in chapter 27. I think it's one even in there. Uh, Paul was on this ship and the Lord appeared to him. Yes. Look at verse uh, chapter 27. Look at verse number. They should have listened to Paul. Verse 21. Uh, Acts 27, 21. This is a good one. Acts 27, 21. But after long abstinence, Paul, Paul just let them do what they want. He didn't say anything. It says, Paul stood forth in the midst. Of, hey, great. Good to see. Uh, we're in Acts chapter 27, uh, verse number 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, now I want you all to hear his advice here. Ye should have hearkened unto me. He says, I told you so. Okay? You should have hearkened unto me. Yeah, we, we need to hearken unto the Apostle Paul. And that's good. And not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good, good cheer, for there, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Look at verse 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, who I am, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. And because they stuck with the apostle, I want you to understand God's mercy. Because of just Paul himself, God's mercy extended to all who were around him. Which are probably all unbelievers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These were a bunch of heathen. Yeah. But God spared them because Paul's very presence blessed them. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Go over to, uh, on the way back, go to... Um, They point out the importance of, yeah, how, how, how God honors that office to the point where even the men with him were going to be blessed. It, it's similar to like uh, when God was with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wherever they went, whoever was around them was blessed as well. That's what happened to Jacob when, when his uh, uncle bamboozled him because his uncle was getting blessed just by his very presence there. God was with him. With Daniel and all these guys, just be, the, 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 the man of God, God's man blessed everyone in his circle. Isn't that Jesus was walking, people touched his foot. I was just, I was just thinking that Matthew, the Lord Jesus, His very presence healed people. Right. Folks would just touch Him with the hope of healing, and he, it would come out of them. Yeah. He goes, "Virtue has left me," and it healed them. Yeah. They would say, "If I could just," they didn't even need to touch Him; they could just touch the hem of His garment. That's yeah. how important these three men are. Both exactly. Jesus and Paul. That's right. Um, let me see here if this is a good one. Uh, we're in Romans. Okay, go, go, over to, go over to Romans. Romans. Go to the book of Romans. Go to Romans chapter 16. Um, this issue of visions and revelations. When Paul talks about visions and revelations of the Lord, it's in particular context of the mystery of Christ. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. What is the Lord going to reveal to Paul? He's going to appear to Paul. Oh, oh yeah. Did we see that? Did we see that? I hope I read that that passage in Acts you did. twenty-six about that. I will appear unto thee. Okay, yeah, you did. I didn't. You Sorry. Well, I would read it. Well, you were reading. That's right. <laughs> Go back to. I was like, wait a minute. It was all good. Yeah. Appear unto thee. Yeah. Seven twenty-six. Verse sixteen. You're talking about. Yeah. Verse he. Verse, but arise, verse stand upon it. What was you talking about, Richard? Because what, what? we were on 27, 21, where you read, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, 
Charles Fitzgerald. Yeah. Didn't say say anything. That's where you stopped. Oh, okay. I I wanted to make sure that I will appear unto the yeah. Uh, you, you were I did. Okay. Rise upon their feet. Mm. Things. Oh no, yeah. Twenty six sixteen was the one at the end. Right. If you look at Acts twenty six verse sixteen, I just want to make sure I did. Yeah, I did. And of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna get these visions and revelations. Um, okay, I did get. Uh, go to. That's why we love his appearance. We love his appearance. That's right. Look at uh, Romans chapter sixteen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, Romans chapter. Go to Romans chapter sixteen now. Thank you all. Sometimes I have verses in my head that I'm saying yeah. in my mind, and I don't know, did I verbalize that or and not? You're going, and you're going next. Yeah. Says yeah, I know, I know. So I, I got to wonder if I said or was I thinking it. All right, Romans 16, verse 25. Romans 16, 25. Now to him, Paul says about God the Father, that is a power to establish you according to my gospel, unique to him. And the preaching. See, why do we need preaching? We need the preaching of who? Jesus Christ. We preach a person. We preach the Lord Jesus. But how? According to or in line with the revelation of the what? The mystery. And that's the key. The mystery. The mystery of Christ. Paul's revelation, his preaching from the Lord is about the mystery. How does it relate to what God kept secret? Notice what he says there. The preaching of Jesus Christ, verse uh, 20, 25, according to the revelation of the mystery. And, and what's the mystery? Which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations now for the obedience of faith. And what God has given the apostle Paul is this revelation of the mystery. Uh, go over to Galatians, Galatians chapter 2. Uh, go past First and Second Corinthians, go over to Galatians 2. Even when he had this Jerusalem conference, in the book of Acts, it stated that the men came together. They said, hey, we should get together, discuss this stuff. Why is Paul preaching different than ours and all this? But from Paul's perspective, it wasn't man who chose to do this. Notice in Galatians chapter number two, he's talking about his, his, his uh, time in Jerusalem after his salvation. Uh, he didn't get right up to see Peter and those guys. It took him three years or so. Then he went back. Uh, look at chapter two, verse one of Galatians. Then 14 years after, after the first time, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. By the way, Titus is not mentioned in Acts because Titus is a Greek. It just says, and another. In book of Acts is written to the Jews, so it says, Paul and Barnabas, and another. Well, Titus was that other, but he's a Gentile. But he is mentioned in Paul's epistles because he is a Gentile. And, and so he says, I took Titus, verse 2, uh, Galatians 2, 2. And I went up how? By revelation. The Lord revealed to Paul that he should do this. I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel, not the gospel, that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to, uh, privately to them, which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Paul needed to go to the, to the very pillars of that Jewish uh, uh, kingdom church and, and, and explain his mystery, his message. And he's saying, listen, the Lord sent me here. The Lord revealed that I should come. So I want, want you all to see that that's what he's talking about. I will come to visions and revelation of the Lord. Go back to 2 Corinthians. Go back uh, a book, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. For me, it's just one page. And what I want you to see is that when he tells them in one of his early epistles, 2 Corinthians, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. He's saying, you guys need to understand who I am as your apostle. But now he's going to go even greater. And in verse 2, I want you to see what he's going to say. He's going to go to even a greater revelation. Wait, sorry, come on. How y'all doing? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse number 2, he says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. 
Now, Paul is going to speak in third person. Okay? I believe he's talking about himself. But he is so desirous not to boast in glory that he's going to show a powerful something that happened in his life. So he's going to say it in the third person. He's not really talking about another man. He's talking about himself. But he, he, he has to glory a little bit, and so he wants to now do it from afar. He's talking third person. Watch what he does here. Verse 2, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Now he puts in parentheses whether in the body. He's not talking about the body of Christ. He's talking about his, whether in the physical body from the context. Watch this. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth. Um, there's something. I, exactly. There's something called NDE. I, at, when, I, when I was putting this study together, because um, I had a brother in the Lord tell me an experience that uh, one of his uncles had. His uncle has since died. Uh, but uh, Brother Matt in Southern California. He told me experience uh, that his uncle had when he was in the hospital and that um, his mother, Mary Ann, was going to visit him. This is Matt telling me, his uncle said this to him, and that in her haste to get out of the, the car in the parking lot that was underground parking lot on, uh, and at the hospital, the uncle was in, in, in the hospital on some high floor, that Mary Ann got out the car real fast and, and bumped her knee hard against a pillar, a concrete pillar or something, right? Really hurt herself, really hurt herself, to the point where she came limping into the room. And so as Matt is telling me this, he's saying that as his uncle is near death, they're working on him with the, with the paddles and stuff, you know, uh, doing the CPR and trying to get him. He was, he was losing, con he, he lost consciousness, but he was losing his life. It was wasting away. And he says that, his uncle says, hey, when he came to and Marianne was there, how's your knee feeling? I saw you bump your knee in the parking lot, okay? And I was like, wow. So I did some research called NDE, Near Death Experience. And just like you come into the world through an umbilical, with an umbilical cord, right, in life, Solomon talks about the similar going out. Yeah, the silver cord. Paul talks about death as a departure, the time of my departure, right? In Genesis 35, when Rachel is having Benjamin, she's giving birth, she, she's, her soul was in departing before she died. So it, there's a process to death as well, right? And something I, I did some research after that. I said, let me see what the, about, I think, I think the number, about 15 million Americans had some type of what they call near-death experience, okay? And it's unexplainable. Where the, what they do have in common is they can see themselves being worked on by the authorities. That's what they all have it's in common. Like earthly term saying they just had a spiritual experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, they could see. It, it's a departing, right? Yeah. Soul departing. Maybe, as Solomon says, maybe that civil court yeah. wasn't broken. But the, millions of them have had, and what they have in common is they can see stuff in the room and outside the room. That's the, that's the reason I brought up Brother Matt and, and his mother. His uncle saw outside the room. I heard some stories like that. I can't remember. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it's hard to explain, but there's something going on. There, there's something spiritual there. And, and just like Solomon says, Paul to use the word departing or her soul was in departing. Um, but anyway, so millions of people have this so-called near-death experience. Well, what happens is they don't know whether, they, they don't feel any different. They feel like they're still in their bodies, okay? But the only thing they do is they see their body being worked on. Interesting. Stone? I think so, Dodie. Here's why I say that. Mm -hmm. It would fit about the time frame. In the book of Acts chapter 14, Paul is with these heathen. And maybe we got to look at it. Go over to Acts chapter 14. Oh, you did? There you go. Well, that's where we need to be, right? He's with these heathen. 
And they think that he's a god, okay? They think that he's a god. In verse number 8, look at uh, Acts 14, verse 8. And, this, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Now, when you read this, this, is a, this happened for real, but there's a spiritual thing behind this. Gentiles. Paul, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Gentiles spiritually, from our mother's womb, we're crippled. We can't walk pleasing to God. This man represents the Gentiles. And it's going to take Paul to be the one to heal him, to give him strength to walk pleasing to God. Symbolic. It's symbolic. That's right. Verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked. The same heard Paul, what? Speak. He goes from unable to walk, pleasing to God. He hears Paul speak, spiritual, uh, the type of, of, of hearing God's word through Paul. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, this is Paul, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. But notice he had faith. Verse 11, and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of uh, Lycan Lyconia, the gods, now notice, they think he's a god, and him and Barnabas, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of man, men. Verse 12, and they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercury, Mercury Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. So what do he then do? They got to sacrifice to the gods, right? Get their priests. Verse 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Now, you know, Paul ain't going to allow that. Verse 14. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes. That's a sign of Jewish reaction to blasphemy. They go, no, no, no. Don't sacrifice to us. That's crazy. And ran in among the people crying out, verse 15, and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you. And preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. By the way, when missionaries, when you go out to heathen, you have to show them. Now, you all want to worship the, the, the sun, moon, and stars, or animals and things, right? Paul would tell them, wait a minute, don't worship those things. Worship the one who created those things. That's God. And that's, that's what they're saying. He says, God made all this. Verse number 16, who in time past, times past, suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. It, it is true, isn't it? The Gentiles just walk however they want to walk in their own ways. Verse 17, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good you know it says about God's glory it's his goodness God is good isn't he he's good to what did the Lord Jesus say why he was here God in the flesh he says look my father allows his son to shine on the evil and the good he allows the rain to fall on the wicked and the good right the righteous God is good hey, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven. Listen, living in California, it has taught me to appreciate rain. When we, when we moved here in 2011, the next five years there was a drought. We were sick and tired of rain when we were in Minnesota. It rained all the time. So you, so I, learned to appreciate, I learned to appreciate rain, man. For real. And the cool weather. Cool weather. Jada Lynn loves the rain. She doesn't remember anything from Minnesota. And the first five years of her, her life in California, there was hardly any rain. So when it rains, she runs out bare feet, man, just like <laughs> dancing in the rain. For real, she, she loves it. Would you rather the cold weather over there or the weather here? Like here, here. Really? Here. Oh. You, 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 you've never been, you've never been, you, no. He's never been to Minnesota in January. Listen. I, 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 deal, I deal with native Californians all the time. I said, I can't explain how cold it is in January in Minnesota. Go, go to a deep freezer. Walk into a freezer. 
Just go in the deep freezer, just with your tank top, just go in there and sit in there for like two hours. You'll start to feel what it's like outside in January in Minnesota. No, I, it's hard, to, I can't explain, you have to actually go experience yeah, yeah, yeah. it. And Jada Lynn don't understand that, so we think about sending her in the cold. Yeah. And brother, it's colder than Chicago? Yes, yeah. yes. It's colder than Chicago. That's saying a lot, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Minnesota's colder. Yes. Yes. Uh, the 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 coldest spot in the United States is Embarrass, Minnesota, and and then second is International Falls, Minnesota. They always they always have the lowest temperatures in the country. Across the board. Across all the United States. Yes, yeah, in the whole country. The the top two are Embarrass, Minnesota, and International Falls, Minnesota. They're like fifty plus degrees below zero. How far did you guys? We, we were a few miles, we were in the Twin Cities, which is, but it, I mean, it, it, would, it would average, um, Minneapolis. yeah, Minneapolis, close, it's still gonna, it's still yeah, gonna it's close. cold. But anyway, notice here, they, they said, no, God gives us goodness. He gives us rain from heaven, verse 17. I appreciate rain, rain is a blessing. And fruitful seasons. By the way, when Israel sinned against God, he would keep the rain from them. He said, I'll make your, your heaven like brass, man, yeah. right? In, Eli in Elijah's day, it didn't rain for three and a half years, type of that uh, part of that tribulation period, then God let it rain. Uh, notice, he gives us rain, verse 17, and fruitful seasons, right? Mm -hmm. The crops and so forth, very kind to man. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. You see how even food has a spiritual connection from God. Food has a, spirit it has a spiritual connection. That's why we thank God for his provision, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Verse 18, but even telling them all of this, verse 18, and with these saints, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. They barely got these people not to sacrifice, right? But notice in verse number 19, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, yeah, because if you look up, when you look up the word stone, stoning, it's always, just look, it's a, he, that he died. Yeah, yeah. They didn't just stone him. Right, right. But, 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 but notice it drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Now, could it have been something like this, this near death experience? So either Paul died and was raised, or he could have just been near death. Yeah. Because he went somewhere. Hold, hold your thought, yeah. hold, your, hold, it, hold that in mind, hold your, uh, that thought, and go back to our passage here in 2 Corinthians. And again, when I did some research about this, a couple of things that the folks had in common, they can't explain what happened. These are a bunch of heathen. But they could see themselves being worked on. But they can also have had experience where they were someplace else up to miles away. <laughs> Matt's uncle saw, he came, he saw, his, he saw Marianne hit her knee. Because the first thing he said to her when he came to is, how's your knee? She's like, what do you mean? How, how do you know about my knee? Well, I saw what happened. And he explained. Anyway, that's kind of common in these things if you look at an Indian near-death experience. But they can travel far. They, it's in room, but there's out of the room. I just did a little bit, and I, I found that interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what it is. We were talking about that earlier when Solomon talks about that in Ecclesiastes. But here's the point. Here, as Paul speaks in third person, he says in verse 2, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body. By the way, in Acts 14 would fit the time period. Paul had not made it to Corinth yet, so he definitely could write. So it was years later he's writing this. Okay. 14 years later. Yeah. Above, above 14, at least, at least yeah. in that time period. But he says, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. So he didn't, he didn't know. He didn't know whether when he got where he got to. Well, let's finish reading. God knoweth. Such a one caught up, caught up where? To the third heaven. Now, this is symb symbolic, everybody. Paul uses this term caught up in another passage. In 1 Thessalonians 4, he talks about at the rapture, the resurrection. He says, and he says, we shall be caught up, right? Uh, hold your hand there. Because this is, sim this is symbolic of what's going to happen to the saints at the resurrection. Paul is a member of the body of Christ. Watch this. 
Go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's read that. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Uh, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13. It's the reason Paul uses this term caught up. For catching away, right? Taking away. Verse number 13. 1 Thessalonians 4 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have died before the rapture, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Okay? We're going to sorrow, we're going to miss them, but we're not to sorrow like the heathen because we're going to see them again. Verse number 14, here's the reason why. For if we believe, do we believe? Yes. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that? Yes. That's, 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 that's the, the, the truth of the gospel, that Jesus died and rose again. Well, if that's true, which it is, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, they're in Jesus, will God bring what with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord that could be us right now shall not prevent or go before or hinder them which are asleep for the Lord himself notice the personal attention for the Lord himself by the way why does Paul call him Jesus in verse 14 but call him the Lord in verse 15 and 16 Say that again, mother. You got it. Listen, his physical body, Jesus, died and rose again. He had talking about his body. But he calls him the Lord because what this, what this rapture does is takes us to the judgment seat of Christ. So he calls him the Lord, right? Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of who? The, the righteous judge. Verse 16. For the Lord, the righteous judge himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up together with them in the clouds. Remember his pavilion in the clouds. We did that study. To meet the Lord, the righteous judge where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. So what happened I think with Paul. Go back to chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 12. When he says, such a one caught up to the third heaven, and as you know, the, back in Genesis, God, the heavens and the earth, he, he divided the heaven. We have the first heaven, that's where our atmosphere here, the second heaven, out, outer, in the, out, outer space there, and then you have the third heaven. Notice here, he says, verse number three, he, he, he reiterates, he's not sure, only God knows. Verse three, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth. Well, what happened to him? How that he was caught up where? Into paradise. But also he heard something. And heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. He heard things that was only for the heavenly places, for paradise. It wasn't even lawful for a man to utter this side of heaven. Paul heard things. He saw things that we won't see till glory. Now, I'm going to tell you, we talked about this. What was going on here? Ryan and I were talking, and Matt, a few, a few years back, we were thinking about, Paul saw himself in glory. He saw the glory that he would experience at the judgment seat of Christ. He, he was overwhelmed. He saw him, he, he, he was most likely in his glorious body. Um, go over to, go over to um, Philippians chapter three. I wanna show you something real quick. Philippians chapter three. Why does it matter whether he was in the body or out of it? He doesn't, in, he doesn't. In this particular instance, in this particular instance, because he mentions it twice, right? You know, in the other story and in this book. So why does he do that? Hold, hold that thought. What was you, what was you saying? From man's perspective, understanding that. Right. And, and, and I'll, I'll give you some more. But yeah, that's, let me, let me get this yeah, one right yeah, here okay. first. I just wanted to like a quick. Yeah. He, Wasn't he saying whether I was in the body or whether I was in the spirit? Wasn't right. He, he didn't, he didn't really, he, 
he's trying to convey he didn't know whether just that he was, was somewhere else. Yeah, he was trying to convey that he was trying to, but 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 that it, it's it's a it's he's kind of trying to relate to the audience too by trying to say to them like I don't know whether I was there or not. He he, he like eh, it's yeah, deeper yeah. also because from man's yeah, perspective yeah. you only know one thing the physical right. 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 He's right. saying something that he doesn't know in or out of the body. Yeah. 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 I think right. he's saying that to relate to the to the audience. Right. Because I know they're skeptical. I know as Paul he knows they're skeptical. Yeah. Already, that's why he's explaining. I, if, I think this verse in Philippians 3, guys, might, might shed some light. Notice in Philippians 3, verse 20, because something happened to Paul that was very similar to what's going to happen at the resurrection. So he didn't know. He goes, was my body there? Was it, was I, was I, was, is it going to be like at the rapture, right? Is, did my body go? So he doesn't know for sure is the point. Uh, look, at, look at verse 20. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Uh, Philippians 3, verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We look for him. He's coming. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his what? Glory. Glorious body. His body of glory. And so I think what Paul is saying is he's trying to articulate. He doesn't know whether it's. Dodie said it. He doesn't know if he just went, his, his, his inner man just went up there, his, his, his spirit and soul, right, or whether it's going to be like at the rapture. He, he, he didn't know. The thing was so overwhelming, glorious, that he didn't, he didn't know. I think that's why he's bringing up the body right there, Richard, because Paul understands that at the resurrection, we all are going to receive a glorious body, okay? I think he saw his, but he, wasn't, he didn't know if it was his actual uh, body okay. or whether it was his inner man. Like, I think there was just that confusion because this had never happened to him. Yeah, and like, every time the Lord came down to him, this time he went up to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Fernando. It, it, it's like uh, uh, he, he experienced what we're all going to experience. So yes. Like, he, is it like a foreshadowing? I think he, he saw, yeah. We, 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 glorification. I think so that's what he, it was a foreshadowing. Yeah. Listen to what he said. Imagine going up and then seeing yourself. Yeah. Yourself. But he was, he was, he looked, he stood. In, in his glorified state. Yeah, in his, in his glorified state. <laughs> exactly. Right? That'd be weird. Post, That'd be an experience. Uh, post judgment seat of Christ state. Post judgment seat of Christ state. So yeah, that was wild. Yeah, he right. had, he, and, 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 and then the, the yeah. gravity. And he's trying to give the gravity of it, yes. Oh, wow. That's what inspired wow. him so much after that. Like, Correct. That's what's on that's that's Correct. Saying. Correct. I, 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 I never, I never. That's why we like strive for the same reason. We think about it. Sorry, Dodie. I know you're not getting all of this. I'll explain. Sorry. This is what we were saying. It's, 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 it's amazing. What we're saying, Dodi, is that the Apostle Paul could have very well experienced his post-judgment seat of Christ existence. He got a glimpse of it, a, pre a preview of it, and it, was, it blew him away. Post-resurrection, post post but also post his... his uh, yeah. Post uh, the judgment seat of Christ. That's why he, he saw that glory. Yeah. yeah. That's why he strikes more after yeah. 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 I can't explain it to you. You know what? Um, let me. In, in, in doing the research on this near death experience, there was this, uh, this psychiatrist, psychologist, one of these guys. He was trying to understand. He would interview all these folks, a bunch of heathen who had these experiences. And he's the one that says, he summed it up, said, what they have in common is they left their body, they could see it worked on, and some of them even went other places. They could see other people. Right. Well, he, he had this one woman who was pregnant. She died like Rachel. Oh, her near-death experience was giving birth, okay, like Rachel in Genesis 35. She, he asked her, he says, did you, when you were leaving, did you want to come back knowing you had just had a child? She goes, I didn't want to come back. He was like, he was like you, you didn't even want to see your child? And she sadly says, no, whatever was taking me away, it was way greater than me coming back. A lot of them say, no, they didn't want to come Now, again, if they're lost, eventually once that cord goes right on into to the flame. But the point is, as they're leaving, they have no desire to come back in this existence. Listen. So imagine what the Apostle Paul experienced. He went to par he, he, he went to paradise. Look at look at verse number four. 
how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, okay? He heard things that it is not lawful for man. In other words, those things were just for that realm. Just for that realm. It's not even lawful for a man down here to utter. Now, what Paul is doing by going to that extreme, he, he's, he's going to the extreme over here, right? Extreme glory, glory. And he's co comparing it to now, he's going to go to the opposite extreme, his infirmities, his weaknesses, his infirmities. Because he's trying, he, he, he got the glimpse of it that, you know what, his sufferings for Christ is what, led him to I think he saw premature he, he, he got a wow. he's got a, a a premonition or he, he got to see his his body of his, he got a preview yeah. of of the glory he's going to bear in Christ yep and after this did he have to give up his brother after yes this, he did yes he did two, was listen because what he, what he was seeing and given by the Lord only he got other men have gone Elijah went right. Enoch went but they didn't come back to say it right. They didn't come back. Paul came back. And Ryan mentioned something. After that experience, by the way, this guy did this. I, I, this is a real thing, this near-death experience. He said he would interview. For, he, he interviewed a man who said after his near-death experience, a couple of years later, he was walking and he slipped on some oil or something. And that he was, his feet went out from under and he was going to slam his head on the concrete. So they asked him, says, what were you thinking? He says, I go, I'll just go back to, I'll, I'll go back to what happened to me when I died the first time or whatever. He wasn't even, he said he was thinking that mid-fall, he go, the worst is I just, I'll just have that same experience I had. He wasn't afraid of death. Yeah. He's like, what he experienced when he, when he near death experienced, he said, as he's falling backwards, he says, I'm about to slam my head on the concrete, but I'll just be knocked out and go where I went. <laughs> it changed these people's mind about death. Well, imagine what Paul, now, what, watch this. Look what Paul says, verse 4, chapter 12, how that he was caught up into paradise, heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to other, of, one, of such a one will I glory. Now, and he's still third person. He's trying, to, he's trying to put their mind, listen, I've had experiences that no other man has ever had. I had experience that no other man has ever had, except the Lord himself. Paul is saying that. Listen, Elijah went, Enoch went, but they didn't come back and, 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 and share all, all what they went through. Of such a one would I glory, yet of myself I will not glory. This is just in his humility. Yeah. But in my what? Infirmities. What Paul is saying, well, let's keep reading. He says, further explanation, verse 6, for though I would desire to glory, he really, with them, if, if, if they, he, he's saying, if you guys really knew who I was, man. You wouldn't be acting a fool the way you are. Yeah. For though I would desire the glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. He's holding back. Lest any man should think of me. Now look here. If he's saying, if I tell you all the glorious things that happened between me and the Lord, they would try to worship him like a god. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just look how easy it was when him and Barnabas just healed somebody. And made them walk. They were ready to sacrifice. Imagine if Paul was sharing everything that, if he if he shared, he says, "I will come to." If, if, even if he got no more of that vision and revelation, if he just shared what happened to him in the past, that would have been enough. Yeah, right. Notice this. He says, verse <clears throat> verse six, at the end, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Paul was. Very meek, very humble. He wanted that to be what man saw. He didn't want a man to see him boast about his authority, which God gave him for their edification, not for their destruction. Now, somebody asked earlier, oh, I think it was you, Fernando. Because of these things, especially that what he saw in glory, right? Because when he saw his preview, it could make you boast, right? Like uh, puffed up, yeah, prideful. Yeah. Like, do you know who I am, fools? You know? Say, I was just about to say, yeah, who, imagine, who, yeah. imagine knowing that you have that power over people. He saw himself. He saw, he saw who he was going to was gonna be in the kingdom. To he be, saw it. To be that way, to yeah. where he was so humble that he, instead of his extreme glory, he focused on his infirmity. He knew it was yeah. He knew, like, he knew it, he knew it, he knew it. So, so, God in his infinite wisdom does something. Watch this. Verse 7. 
verse number seven, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. That's the ones he already had. He still is going to come in verse one. He's going to have more. But God had to do something because he knows man's weakness. Here we go. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The, 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 the messenger of Satan to buffet me. That word buffet means to, to uh, it, it literally means to strike a blow. To, to, when he gets, if, 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 it was, if he was going to get puffed up, it, it's to suppress it. Suppress it. Well, there, there's some, they got, there's different things about, every, there's things from everything to, from a, a eye affliction to men who followed him or uh, who, who, who uh, uh, persecuted him. I think it's more people who would go behind Paul and Paul would labor with the mystery. These guys would go back and try to confuse the saints and mess them up, keep them from Paul, exclude, what'd you say? Exactly. Now, this issue of a thorn in the flesh, I want you to hold your hand there. I, I was looking this up, and I said, oh, this is a good, this is a good, this is a good um, uh, verse to show you the significance of that. Uh, hold your hand there and go to um, Numbers chapter 33. Numbers 33. It's all the way in the beginning. Numbers 33. And this is a good example of what the, a thorn in the flesh. Numbers 33 and verse number 55. Numbers 33, 55. Start at uh, uh, verse 53. Now God, God is telling Israel as they journey, you must clear out those Gentiles who are in the land before you. And if you don't, something's going to happen. Look at Numbers chapter 33, verse 53. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Amalekites and all, it was, it was a number of them. Verse 53. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein for I have given you the land to possess it and ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families and to and to the more ye shall give the more inheritance and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth according to the tribes of your fathers uh, tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit verse 55 but if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land before, from before you, when it shall come to, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them, now watch this everybody, shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns, what? In your sides and shall what? Vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. And so that issue of that thorn in the flesh, it was something to vex Paul. It was vexing. You it was heard that word vexing? That, it was always that counter shot. Yeah, it was, was to do that it was always this spiritual hindrance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul would get gain some territory, and here it just constant, constant, yeah, constant. He, had to prove himself. he did, Dodie. And it was, it was, we, you, I, could, I understand that spiritually. Yes, it's that constant satanic opposition. It's just constant. Right. It's also right. mentioned in uh, Judges 2 3. Say that again, right? Let's go over there. Judges. Book of Judges. It's crazy because I remember when. Chapter 2, uh, verse 3. Go ahead. Uh, Esther, when. Um, Mordecai. Mordecai's mm -hmm. uh, niece Amen. was supposed to marry. Esther was supposed to marry the king or whatever. Well, that guy that was sneakily trying to fight against him came hey, from man. that family that they didn't kill way back. Mm -hmm. So it's almost kind of like. It's almost kind of like wow. it's almost kind of like Paul's up against something that he didn't even really have anything to do with. Right. It's something ancient. Almost. Yeah. You know, yeah. Since it's and since he's in the spiritual realm, there's really no time. It's, it's all time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Look at uh look at uh Judges chapter uh, two verse one and two, Judges chapter two verse one and two, and, and an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt, and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Verse 2, and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? 
Verse 3, Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a, this is a good one, thanks Ryan, a snare unto you. And see, there was this constant, go back as we, we coming down to end. Little G for Satan is the God of this world. Exactly, gods, that's right, they're gods. Look, go back to chapter 12 as we, as we uh, wrap up. When Paul says in verse number 7, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet. Again, that's to, to, to a, a, a strike, a blow. Um, he said to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Listen, the one thing that God knows that naturally would happen to a man would that he'd be lifted up with pride, okay? Right. Even Paul tells Timothy, lay hands suddenly on no man. He says, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And in order to allow Paul to constantly depend on the Lord and not get too prideful, notice God allowed it. Now, he tried to get out of it as we end. Notice, lest I should be exalted by man. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord trice. That's three times, okay, trice. And by the way, three is the number of wit complete witness to a Jew, right? He had to hear it three times. That it might depart from me. And he said unto me, oh, I love this. I love this my grace is sufficient for thee. For what? My strength is made perfect in me. Where's God's strength? It's his grace, and his grace is his strength. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. God wants us to be weak and depend on him, to trust him. Not ourselves, him. He says, that's where his power, his strength. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, Paul renewed his mind through the word of Christ and said, most gladly, therefore, I would rather. That's why I know this is him talking about himself up there, because he, he says, I of the two things, Talk about this stuff that, that's going to happen with me over here. <laughs> or go back to my weaknesses. Well, I want Christ to live his life in through me. He says, most gladly, verse 9, therefore I will rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of who? Christ may rest upon me. We've got to end in verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. In reproaches. Listen, can I tell y'all something? Ryan said it. When Paul got a glimpse, a preview of himself, he saw what was in store. He, he saw what all of these sufferings for Christ was going to end up as. He said, bring it on, baby. Bring it on. Why not, huh? Come on, baby. Because it's just giving. For the, listen, he said, therefore, I take pleasure. I mean, who glories? Who glories in infirmity? Who takes pleasure in infirmity? It's crazy because we know that we have the same thing coming. I know. And it makes me, it makes, because of, like, I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. It's crazy because, you know, considering the circumstances that I'm in, sometimes I think to myself, like, why do I have to potentially go away, you know, and why did I have to do it before? And sometimes I think to myself, like, you know, maybe for me it's just, that's what it takes for God to, to isolate me and get me in and do something through me for whatever his plan is. Because everybody has a different, you know what I mean? But we all know that. It's, it's crazy because it's like the Lord wired everybody to be able to relate to an infirmity. And, and then once, it's crazy because like when you tell somebody your infirmity, it's like it's like that, that door, that wall they have up kind of goes down and yeah. they're willing when to you believe open up you. Your, yeah. And then that's when you start telling them about, but God wired us that way. You know what I mean? It's weird, bro. But. You know, yeah. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses. For whose sake? He understood it for Christ's sake. And then it didn't allow him to not only be prideful, it kept him humble, but it made him appreciate, for when I am weak, then am I strong. I also thought as we end, why did, why did, why did it take three times? Why did Paul asked the Lord twice. Why didn't the first time the Lord say to I thought about it. I, I wrote, I wrote, say, exactly. I said, Paul could evaluate and think about all of this. God wanted him to focus on what's going on here. 
Because you would think God answers his prayer right away. And did, did, no. He, he asked him three times to take this away, this affliction away. Mm -hmm. he, was he was learning something. He, God wanted him to evaluate and think about what he was teaching him a lesson. And he got it. He says, ah, oh, I got it. For when I am weak, when I am weak, when I, when I humble myself before God and depend on him and his spirit and his word, then am I strong. Whereas my strength is, is by being weak before God. You, when you're weak before God, then he can use you because his strength is made perfect where? In weakness, in our weakness. Remember that. Paul got that so that he might get the glory, that no flesh would glory in his sight. He that glory, let him glory in that he knows the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Okay, wrong in Philippians 1, 21 through the, um, to the end of the chapter. Mm -hmm. I think about that every day, every day. That's making me That's why that's my favorite that. book. Because Philippians, me, Paul got it. He got it. Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. <clears throat> Listen, Paul had no fear of death. He said, thanks for sending me to glory sooner, man. Let's do this. But then he had understanding that until the gods finished with him, nobody could mess with him. Right. He, he, can't, he, killed he, he, had he had death threats on his... The they were taking vows to kill Paul before they would even eat or drink. It never happened. Yeah. Because he said, until God wants me to... I, I, I could understand this a little bit, being in ministry over a couple decades in the grace message. It makes you appreciate your life. It's like, I'm going to stay alive. If, if, if my will is to stay and, and serve the Lord, mm -hmm. and I wake up, I see the clock, say, time to serve the mm -hmm. Lord, I'm going I'm to be here. Mm -hmm. I can't explain. It's the mercy of God, mercy in the ministry. And Paul had that understanding a thousandfold that nothing's going to happen to me unless the Lord allow. Exactly. And you want to send me to glory, send me to glory. Yeah. For to me to live this Christ, let's end over there. Go to Philippians 1. The good, good passage, Mom. Yeah. That's a good place to end. Because it's true. Listen. Philippians 1.21. For to me to live is Christ. Like he lives in Christ. And to build Christ in him. And to die is what? Gain. But verse 22. But if I live in the flesh, what's the benefit of him staying around? This is the fruit of my labor. It's fruit of bound account. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. In verse 23. Note, note, but I want you to get this. He says, I shall choose. Mm -hmm. Listen, if Paul woke up every day and says, Lord, I want to serve you today. Let's do it. God says, okay. Now, obviously, he had a ministry period, 30 plus years. That God came. By the way, the Lord came to Paul and says, you're done, son. You're done. Uh -huh. And Paul says, then let's give it to Timothy. And Paul gave the ministry to Timothy. But it was, it was God. Philippians, Paul's still pressing. Paul is still pressing in Philippians. Mm -hmm. And only a couple of short years later, he writes 2 Second Th Timothy. He says, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Christ told him. He says, you're good. You're done. Let's go. Nevertheless, uh, verse 23, for I am in a straight betwixt two. Remember, he says, I choose this. Having a desire to depart. I told you he, he talks about death as departure. And to be with Christ, which is what? Far better. Far better. Yeah. Do you know it was hard for Paul, I'm sure, to come back after seeing all that? Yeah. yeah. Like, we'll come back to this. But I got a ministry. We got a ministry. Listen, if God, if you, if you wake up alive, God wants you to serve him. I'm telling you that. You can almost, you're not tempting God, but I mean, like, you, you're alive in spite of yourself, okay? Let me tell you that. I tell you that. Watch this. Nevertheless, verse 24. To abide in the flesh is more needful for who? For them. He was living for them. And then he thought about it, says, verse 25, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you. Why? For your furtherance and joy of faith. Listen, Paul says, as long as I'm alive and God gives me strength and breath, I'm going to give you all that mystery message, prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ. He says, I'm going to do it. And until, until the Lord told him, all right, you're done, son. All right, Lord, I can rest now. I'm pressing. I'm bringing fools along with me. Come on. But the Lord had to tell him, you're done. That's the truth. That's God. Man, I'm going to tell you. You wake up and you say, Lord, I want to live you. Whatever your circumstance, whatever the circumstance, he'll say, yep, okay. And when is your time? 
See, I, I'm praying to God that uh, we all go in the rapture. Because Dodie, Dodie will be uh, 89 in November, and I gave her to 90. I said she can't ask to go be with the Lord before 90, but that's, so we got to go together, though. We ain't got to go. <laughs> go to God. Ten more years, only. Ten more. I want the Lord to come today, man. Me too. Then we all could be together. Jada Lynn miss her family and friends back. Uh, I want you all to pray for my little girl. I'll just say this, because folks that like to know about the family and the saints. Uh, my, my brother-in-law, Gary Munson, Krista's older brother, he lived here in Hayward. He lived in Seattle, um, Washington. He lived just recently in Portland, Oregon. Well, they just moved back to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So uh, Krista's other brother and his family, two children and wife are there. Now her other brother is there with his wife and two children. Jada Lynn saw all her cousins happy yesterday with yeah. Nana and Pop, and she just cried. She missed them. She missed her friend there and stuff. She goes, it, uh, she goes, she goes, she goes, she says, she goes, if the Lord takes Miss Doty home before the rapture, can we leave? I said, no, we got Ryan and the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> she said that this morning. I said, honey, we have a ministry. <laughs> She's just going through that, being prayer for her. She missed her family and friends, you know. We, we, we come up with a, a compromise. I said, no, we're, we're here in California. I get it. She don't understand. She's 10. We, we're thinking about maybe sending her to Minnesota during the summer with her, when her cousins are out of school oh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then letting them visit us during the summer. It's not the same, but, but she don't remember any of the bad in Minnesota. She's too young. Send <laughs> her in December. <laughs> I'm that close. I'm that close. I'm that close. Because she don't remember the cold. But... You know, I just told Ryan this morning, uh, you know, she's at that age now. She, she's, she's getting older, and uh, she saw, it, it hit her when she saw her cousins yeah. on that side of the family together. She got cousins here, too, my sister's children. But she missed the Minnesota people, her friends and stuff. So I told her we can't move back there, honey. We have ministry here. Um, but we, we're going to be in prayer for her because she, she, she struggled with that, seeing her other cousins go back and all happy to see, be with, yeah. with, with the family and friends and stuff. But I told her this is where, you know, we're, we're called to be. And, um, but be in a prayer for her, because I, I feel her. I feel her. She, she missed her family on that side and her friends. Her best friend is Izzy out there. And uh, so be in prayer for her. But um, um, we just thank the Lord for his marvelous grace. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time together. We thank you for your grace and, and peace and mercy, Father. Um, we're so thankful that we, we don't have to have Paul, our Apostle Paul commend himself to us. We, 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 we're, we here in NorCal Grace, uh, we, we believe your word, that, that he is our apostle sent by you for our, for our good, for our edification. So uh, let us not be like the Corinthians who have to constantly be reminded of who he is uh, as to uh, uh, obey his authority. Uh, but let us share with the other saints in the body of Christ who don't know uh, his, his, unique, of his unique ministry. Um, let us serve you each and every day here in NorCal Grace, sharing the, the gospel, the grace of God, and the rightly divided word. And Father, we do pray for all of our saints. Um, uh, there's been a lot of, of, of um, uh, things um, affecting all, all the saints, Father, in these last days. We need your strength like the Apostle Paul. Maybe we, may, may we be weak in ourselves so that the power of Christ may rest upon us, Father. And we thank you for that uh, wonderful blessing in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.